Hi guys, so we're back once again to the sale of the NHS. I've been saying this on numerous occasions. The, the NHS is not going to be sold off all in one day. It's going to be sold off bit by bit. And it has already begun. And here is another example. This one being a pretty big example of an American company taking control of GP surgery services. 370,000 of them. Now, this issue was raised by the Shadow Health Secretary, Jonathan Ashworth, in the House of Commons on Tuesday, and Matt Hancock, the Health Secretary, responded. Of course, he didn't answer any questions. So let's hear what he had to say. In London a week ago, G or a week and a half ago, GP services for 375,000 patients were taken over by the US Health Insurance Corporation, Centene. There was no patient consultation. There was no public scrutiny. This is arguably a stealth privatisation with huge implications for patient care. Will he step in, halt the transfer, ensure it's fully scrutinised and, and prevent takeovers like this happening in the future? OK, so what is he talking about? This is from the Camden New Journal. It says here, the great GP surgery takeover. One of the biggest health insurance firms in the United States has seized control of a raft of GP surgeries, including five in Camden. Um, it goes on to say, the takeover which anti-privatization campaigners say has been largely cloaked in secrecy and approved without any option for a public debate, affects 370,000 patients. Not a few hundred patients here, 370,000 patients in London with a private partner, uh, sorry, private partnership considering itself to be the leading provider of NHS primary care services in the UK. So what is this company we're talking about? This is Centene Corporation, and this is according, this information is, you can find it yourself on Wikipedia. It says here it's a public company. It's been trading, it's, it's trading in the S&P 500. It's a Fortune 500 company. It was founded in 1984. And it has a revenue of $74.639 billion in 2019. Um, so what business, I and mean, let's call it business because that's what it is. It's a business. What, what is its line of business? Some of its main lines include Medicare, um, the ACA health insurance marketplace. The ACA is also known as Obamacare. Health, um, uh, Medicare and TRICARE, including, and it also includes com uh, traditional commercial health insurance. You know, we, we've talked about that before in the past, uh, the disaster that private health insurance is in the United States. It goes on to say that uh, Centene also contracts with other healthcare and commercial organizations to provide specialty services, including behavior, healthcare services, case management software, correction insurance, in home health services life and health management, vision, pharmacy benefits, um, management and tele telehealth services. And it, here is a list of some of the names. I, I would recommend maybe taking a screenshot because some of them may be appearing in a, in a doctor's surgery near you soon. But let's hear how Matt Hancock responded to this. Uh, well, Mr. Speaker, on his first point, uh, such a reasonable and sensible man is, of course, always welcome on these benches. <laughs> and I might point out, Mr Speaker, that since his wife is taking the Labour Party to court, why doesn't the whole Ashworth family come and join us on this side? On the, on the substantive point that he uh, raises, um, uh, uh, of course, what matters for patients is the quality of patient care. What, pa what ma matters to patients is quality care, and they have been been provided quality care by the NHS since the introduction of the NHS. The public have a very high opinion of the NHS. I think if you actually ask the, the public, would you like America, an American style system? Most people would say, no, I do not, because I've heard the horror stories. I've, I've heard about people who have to pay thousands of dollars to get a bloody taxi, a taxi, what am I saying? An ambulance ride to the hospital. Mothers having to pay in order to allow, to be allowed to touch their children after birth. People going into debt because of a health issue. People losing their homes and going bankrupt 
because they can't pay medical bills. So if Matt Hancock wanted to be honest and say, look, patients, would you like an American system or would you like the NHS that we have been claiming to support all along? I think most people would say, no, I prefer to stay with the NHS. But this is part of the plan is to undermine the NHS, replace it with in, in pieces with uh, a private system. And then when it's, you know, as I said before, you're not going to wake up one day and everything is privatized. It's, gradu it's a gradual process and it becomes normal that you pay for these extra. Now, first of all, the government is going to pay for them. This has been paid for by taxpayers, by the taxpayer. So you're not going to feel the impact. But gradually, the companies are going to expand their control over, over health care and they're going to in, encourage the government to open it up and allow them to provide uh, extra services that you have to pay for. And they will encourage people to buy these extra services. And then eventually, sometime in the future, there will be no free services. It will all be completely privatised. And we've seen again and again, including especially throughout the pandemic, that what matters to people is the quality of care. And that's what we should look out for. And that is, I know, what, what doctors, nurses... I hate this guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like punching the screen because he, he's lying. He's not, he knows he's lying and he's not even actually very good at it. Boris Johnson has almost perfected a lie because he's in a sense, almost convinced himself that he's telling the truth. But you can see in Matt Hancock's face that he knows he's lying and he's terrible at it. He's a very bad actor. And other staff, both in primary care and right across the board, are working so hard to deliver. So, as I said before, this is one of the steps towards complete privatisation. We've seen it already taking place and unfortunately, the public will be convinced that the government care about the NHS. They'll be convinced that the NHS, you know, needs to be reformed. It needs to be tinkered at. Um, some parts, you know, we, we can sell off to save money because, you know, we have all these debts and we need the, the, the NHS needs to be streamlined. At the moment, a lot of this is hidden, but I can guarantee as soon as the pandemic is over, the rhetoric will be, look, the NHS isn't working very well. We need to sell off parts of it. Look at how well the private sector is doing. You can, you can actually see examples of this recently where Matt Hancock was demanding, demanding that the opposition, the Labour Party, thank the private companies for the work that they're doing during the pandemic. So if Matt Hancock is demanding that politicians who are there to represent their constituents thank private companies who are making a profit maybe not in the short term but perhaps in the definitely in the long term it can is that not just an example for you that the nhs is going to be completely sold off i'm going to fight it it doesn't affect me directly but it affects people in the UK and I care about the people in the UK. I do not want the NHS sold off. The NHS is a shining example of what other countries should be emulating. It should be defended tooth and nail. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?